your horses, please. All right, men. Keep them covered. Kindly drop that rifle. Now you'll oblige by throwing down that express box. Thank you, gentlemen. You may proceed. Get up! All right, boys. That's all for today. But ain't dressed up in a pair of chaps, it's wearing skirts. You know what I'm going to do one of these days, Elmer? Get me a horse? No. If we don't get a job of playing vaudeville, yeah, I'm going to find me a handy piece of wood, squat in a big soft rocking chair, and just whittle and rock. Whittle and rock. Whittle and rock. Whittle and rock. Whittle? Whittle who? <laughs> <laughs> Alibi? Maybe you could trade that cayuse in for a nice, tame hobby horse. Yeah, or else swap that six-gun for a set of knitting needles. <laughs> Go on and laugh. Just the same, I'm getting mighty tired of you two mavericks are dragging me around, shaking the bushes to scare up trouble. I don't recollect shaking any bushes. Now listen, when the head detective of the express company says he wants to see us, it ain't to help him with his spring planting. No, sir. He's dug up some kind of trouble, and he figures that we're three fellers that can help him clean it up. Let's go, Elmer. Where are we going? Shopping. For a rocking chair and a whittling knife. Uh-oh. Now, <laughs> now, take it easy, Alibi. You know, you can't do that. It'd be bad manners not to talk to a big official. <laughs> well, maybe it would at that. If you ask me what the express company wants, is going to take a lot more than good manners. Well, what are we waiting for? After five years in prison, Black Bart was paroled. For two years, he reported regularly. Then he broke his parole. Seemingly, he disappeared from the face of the earth. When was this? About ten years ago. So long ago that we'd almost forgotten. Until recently, a new holdup specialist has been working in this part of Arizona. A robber whose trademark almost resembles that of Black Bart. Well, how do you mean, Grover? Well, I mean that he's so infernally polite, just as Black Bart. Very careful to say please and thank you. Oh, a gentleman, eh? And carries an unloaded gun. No, that's why I said almost. This man's gun is loaded. Last week, our best messenger was killed. That's why we called in you range busters. It's too bad we can't stay. Come on, fellas, let's go while it's still alive. Elmer's scared of the dark. Oh, no, wait a minute, alibi. What do you want us to do, Grover? I want you to go to Apache Butte and get to the bottom of these robberies. And how do you suggest we go about this? Well, which one of you are the handiest with cards, or Olette? Well, I have a notion we're going to have to hand all such doubtful honors to Crash. Oh, not that I go in for gambling. I just uh, sort of play to get the drift of the others in the game. <laughs> Good enough. Here, try your luck at the El Dorado. The El Dorado? What's that? It's the leading saloon and gambling hall. It's just a chance. Black Bart used to have a weakness for gambling. Well, how am I to tell this gambler from any of the other gamblers? 
Look for a man whose superstition is three. Roulette or draw poker. Give him a pair of trays and you can't raise him out of the game. Oh, I see. Now I suggest that the three of you slip into town separately. Pretend to be strangers to each other. That'd be a pleasure. And this is where your headquarters will be. The town of Apache Butte. And that's your slipper. Yes, it is. Well, I'll get it for you. <laughs> Thank you. My dog thinks it's a game, running away with things. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad he likes games. He's a smart little dog, isn't he? Who? Duchess? Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, she is. Oh. <clears throat> is she, huh? Uh, can I put it on for you? Uh-huh. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, are you a stranger here in town? Yes, ma'am, I am. I suppose, uh, just passing through. Well, not exactly. Not now I'm not. I'd like to stay and maybe get more acquainted. Oh, that is, uh, with the town. <laughs> Good morning, Molly. Well, good morning, Dusty. I thought you were going to see me at the meeting. Well, I was, but when I didn't find you there, I thought maybe I'd better come after you. Oh, uh, Mr. King, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, uh, oh, Mr. Uh... Oh, uh, Corrigan. Uh, uh, pleased to meet you, Mr. King. How do you do? Say, have you lived in Apache Butte long? Well, long enough to get acquainted with the right people. Uh, mm -hmm. First, Mr., uh, what was that, uh, Harrigan? Corrigan. Oh, Corrigan, Corrigan, sure. I'll try and remember that. <laughs> Say, not Crash Corrigan. Yes? Why? Why, he says. Why, the most notorious gambler and ladies' man in all El Paso, and he says why. A gambler? Ladies' man? In the flesh, Miss Collins. May I introduce Senor Venturoso? Who? Well, Senor Venturoso, that's Spanish for lucky. The senoritas gave him that name. L you know, uh, lucky in cards, uh, lucky in love. Who be? Now, don't be modest, senor. Don't you remember how the crowds used to follow you about, cheering and upsetting carriages, shooting and shouting? Viva la senor Venturoso! Senor Venturoso, he have win again! Oh, senor Venturoso, you're much too modest. Come on, Mr. King. We'll be late for services. Shall we see you there, Mr. Corrigan? Yeah, maybe. Well, now, don't you change any of your plans for us and uh, Flanagan. Corrigan! Corrigan, Corrigan. If I were you, I'd watch your behavior. Now, remember, Hooligan... Corrigan! Corrigan, uh, Apache Butte isn't El Paso. Come, Molly. Uh. Viva la Senora Venturoso! <laughs> Hello, Dad. Howdy, Mr. Collins. Howdy. We were afraid we'd be late. What are you doing out here? Hasn't the meeting started? The deacon's not here yet. He isn't? No, but he should be along directly. Mr. Alibi went to find out what was keeping him. I'm awfully sorry, folks, but I was helping Dick Hume's wife look after him most all night. When I got back home and lay down for a wink of sleep, I forgot to wake up. It's a shame you had to be disturbed. As soon as I found out how things was, I told him we'd make out without him somehow. But he's... Oh, shucks, I'm feeling fine. Joe Collins here can tell you there was a time when I got along with mighty little sleep. I guess that's right. How about Dick Hume, Deacon? Is he going to pull through all right? Yes, I think the crisis has passed. His fever started to break about 5 o'clock this morning. <laughs> well, folks, suppose we get on with the meeting. I'm certainly glad to hear about Dick. 
I was a little worried. Well, I'll tell you, Joe, I'm not nearly as worried about Dick as I am about you. Can you pull through? After the example you've been setting for me? <laughs> I'd be a pretty weak sort if I couldn't win a little fight against a bottle of whiskey. It's not an easy fight, Joe. But I know you can do it. And so does Molly. Come on. The table's doing. Bigger than ever. Well, that's good. You know, this place is big enough for now, but we're going to be a little cramped in here after this railroad gets to town. That's why we've got to buy those three lots up the street. Now, we're going to build something that'll rival the Frisco Barbara Coast. We'll help the railroad put Apache Butte on the map. But, Miller, ain't it going to take a lot of money to build anything like that? <laughs> What's the matter? Losing your nerve? Of course I'm not. Why? Then you know where we'll get the money and just as fast as we need it, without depending upon those gambling tables. But the most important thing is to get the money to buy those lots with. Spoden Collins won't sell to you. He's been full of some funny notions since you got hooked up with this here deacon. <laughs> yeah? Well, I think a little of this stuff here will make him forget a lot of those notions. Yeah, but he also took the pledge. Don't mean a thing. Well, I didn't take no pledge. I'll get another bottle and we'll drink on that. <laughs> All right. 33 wins. 33. Well, I'll uh, try 23 this time. Hold down. 23. I guess this is my lucky day. Uh, uh, I use reverse progression. I'll try uh, three this time. <laughs> Number three. Number three. Pretty lucky. Well, friends, it seems to me that for a little community like we are, we haven't done so bad after all. Of course, we haven't any fancy chapels like a lot of people are used to in the East. We have to hold our meetings in the schoolhouse. But one of these days, we're going to have a fine little church and money enough to bring in a regularly ordained minister of the gospel instead of a maverick deacon like me. <laughs> we're going to have a church because we all want it. Because we're all working, scraping together to get the funds to build one. We're going to have a house of worship here because you need a corral for all the stray calves to be safe in. And our church is going to be our foundation, just like the Constitution is the strength of this great nation of ours. Our church is going to help make Apache Butte a town that all America will be proud of. A place where all men can earn their living honestly without any fear of losing those rights that make this country of ours what it is. A land of liberty and justice for all. But not until we rid this town of all this corruptness, gambling, and drinking. That's right. Well, I reckon I'll try 23 again. I'll bet you. 23. That wasn't a bad haul, was it? I'm beginning to think I can't lose. <laughs> Better go 
easy on them figures, Miller. The stranger up front put an awful crimp in our calculations. Winning big? Yeah, at roulette. He's playing nothing but threes. 13, 23, 33. What does he look like? Not what you think. Blackboard ought to be old enough to be his father. You're putting too much stock in what Joe Collins said the last time he was drunk. I don't think he ever seen Blackboard, and if he did, he ain't within a thousand miles of here. Yeah? Well, anyhow, I'm going to have a look at that, aren't we? Dealer, give me credit for these 14 stacks. I'll collect later when I put my horse up. <laughs> Howdy, stranger. Howdy. My name's Miller. I more or less own this place. Well, my name's Corgan. I'm glad to meet you. Thank you. The boys are telling me you're having quite a run. What's your system? Oh, I don't have any system. I'm just lucky. Are you sure that's all? Yeah, quite sure. Seems like a nice fellow, don't he? Yeah. But I wonder where he got the idea of playing those threes. You still don't think he could be Black Bart, do you? No, but that's where he could have got the notion. And if he knows that much about Black Bart, he could know more. No, oh, I guess not. Anyhow, he could come down here looking for Black Bart. I get you. It'd kind of gum up our plans some if he could. Hey, where does he think he's going? Who? Oh. Corrigan is heading for the schoolhouse. Well, that don't look as if he's going to put up his nag. He might even be going to that church meeting. Joe Collins is getting sort of anxious to make that announcement of his. Suppose we hear from him now. Go ahead, Joe. Folks, appreciate what he's done for us, as well as what he wants to do for Apache Butte. What I mean is, when you're supposed to be chasing an outlaw like Black Bart, you don't go looking for him at a meeting in the schoolhouse. Well, I know that. But Dusty thought it'd be kind of nice on the count of the deacon. Didn't look like he was thinking of the deacon when he was standing alongside of Molly there with his hymn book upside down. <laughs> well, maybe Dusty did have other reasons, but mainly to show the deacon how we appreciate him at taking care of the sick and the needy and lambasting the devil. Oh, Alibi. Have you seen Dusty? Hello, Clumsy. Look, where's Dusty? I don't know, but why don't you go sit down someplace? You're making me nervous. You want my seat? No, that... Oh, there you are. Well, it's about time you were making some kind of a report. Oh, Buenos dias, Senor Venturoso. Are we in the right hotel? Oh, that's right. You haven't met the Senor yet, have you? Amigos, may I present El Senor Venturoso, the sharpest card sharper and shoe fitter in this territory, alias Hash Harrigan. Glad to know you. Look, Romeo, just because I'm doing my job is no reason for you to go around making me look like a fool in public. Well, now, wait a minute. I thought that was the idea, to give the impression that you were a gee whiz at poker and roulette and stuff. All right, go on, have your fun. But when you get around to it, how about telling me where you've been? Well, I'll tell you where I've been. I picked out a spot to shadow the stagecoach. Yeah? Yeah. Well, what are we hanging around here for? Well, the stage doesn't make a Sunday run to Apache Butte. Now, we'll have to wait till in the morning. And we'll all meet outside of town, and I'll take you to the spot that I picked out. So this is a good spot you picked out. Sure. When you get way up to the top, well, you can see the road for miles, both ways. Yeah, of course, we'll never be able to get down again. But it sure is a swell view. <laughs> hey, it sounds like those shots are mighty close to the stage road. Let's go.
driver. Did you run into trouble? Plenty. Got held up. Back here, please. See you later. is Mother Hubbard's cupboard. Look, looks like he made tracks this way. Look, chances are that's him down there now. to give us a slip. Yeah, without letting us get close enough to see what he looks like. That's how it always was with Black Bart. Just when they thought they had him cornered, all they found was the corner. You know, Bull, I found out for sure what this fellow Corrigan and those other two strangers are up to. Now, after this, when I'm out collecting, all you've got to do is to keep an eye and a gun pointed at him. I made enough on this morning's haul to get us just about ready to talk business to Mr. Joe Collins. Too late. Collins got rid of the choicest piece of that property. Well, who'd he sell it to? He didn't sell. He gave it away to them Bible bangers. They're going to build a church on it. When did this happen? Yesterday at church meeting. They're having Judge Griggs fix up papers making them a corporation. That way he can deed it to them legal. Oh, then it isn't actually deeded yet? It will be, though, as soon as the papers are passed on to the state capitol. Well, the best thing you can do is go find Mr. Joe Collins and bring him in here right away. Well, if it's a question of price, you don't think I'm offering you enough, why name your own? I've got spot cash ready to pay you. Price hasn't anything to do with it. Part of the property is already promised, like I told you. And the kind of business you'd put on the other wouldn't be neighborly for a church. <laughs> I know, but there are a lot of places you can build a church. And besides, the money that I'm going to pay you for those lots, it's you... It's no use. My mind is settled on what I want to do. Well, all right, Joe. No hard feelings, but... Come on. Have a little drink. No, thanks. Oh, come on, Joe. This... This is a little special. Much obliged. But this time, I've quit for good. Well, fine, Joe. I'm certainly glad to hear that. Now remember, there's no hard feelings. Sure. It's all right. Goodbye, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Father, you haven't been drinking. No. I was there on business. Miller sent for me. What did he want? Well, he wanted to buy some of my property down the street. Of course.
course I refused to sell him. I told him. How do you do, ma'am? How are you, sir? How do you do, Mr. Cargan? Uh, I have a notion, ma'am, that you have a very good opinion of me, but just the same, I'd like to help with that church you're going to build. Well, I scarcely think we could use that kind of money. But, ma'am, these are perfectly good American greenbacks, and besides... Oh, I see. But I didn't get these gambling. I worked for them and earned them, every cent of it in an honest way. Oh. Well, in that case, thank you. What's your blood? Oh, don't mention it. Goodbye. Oh, uh, Mr. Corrigan. Yes? I just wondered if you'd care to go to our social tonight. I'd... I mean, we'd love to have you. Wouldn't we, Father? Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, thank you. I'd be only too happy to. Fine. Then we'll see you tonight? Yes, ma'am, you sure will. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Corrigan. Oh. Uh, excuse me, sir. Goodbye. I thought you didn't like Corrigan on account of his gambling. Oh, I, I didn't say I disliked him. I said it was too bad such a nice fellow should have such a terrible reputation. Well, he seems to be reforming, though, doesn't he? I wonder why. Oh, I wouldn't know, Father. Look, you go on ahead. I have some business to attend to. Business? Uh-huh. Important business. Oh. <laughs> Jordan. Yes, I'm jogging. I know in lonely nights for me will soon be through. Jogging, just a jogging. I go into a home where prairies meet the blue. I keep telling paint that soon. Our schemes are gonna blossom out all right. Soon he's gonna take me to my happy wedding night. So I'm jogging. Yes, I'm jogging. I know in lonely nights for me will soon be through. Yes, I'm jogging, just a jogging through the blue. That was lovely, Dusty. I think the folks are in for a pleasant surprise when you sing for them at the social tonight. Well, they're in for a surprise, all right. I hope it's pleasant. I have a surprise for you, too. Mr. Corrigan's going to be there. Corrigan? Yes, I invited him. You know, Dusty, I think you have him all wrong. He gave the church $50 today. And that doesn't seem like the sort of thing a really bad man would do. Does it? Mm, maybe not. Uh, well, come on, we better hurry. We'll be late for the social. Too. What do you mean, pretty good? Why, it was food for the soul. It ain't my soul I'm worried about. It's my stomach that's empty. When do we eat? Shh. Don't shush me. You know you said yourself. The only reason you're coming was because there's going to be eats. Why, Elmer? Yes, you did. Hey, Deacon. Excuse me. Is there a chuck wagon handy or ain't there? Yes, Elmer, there is. Each lady has brought a lunch basket heaped full of enough food for two. You don't know alibi. Oh, there'll be enough for him also. A large order, Deacon, a very large order. Uh, do we get it free? No, Elmer. I'll explain. You Hear see? that? There's a catch to it. <laughs> How much did it cost? That depends. 
But the purpose is, folks, to start a building fund. And an auction is how we're going to do it. Maybe you've been wondering about the sheet. Well, it's hung like it is so the ladies can get behind it with their lunch basket. Then they'll step forward one at a time with a lamp fix so that all you can see is their shadows. And then you gentlemen start bidding. I bid 90 cents. Do I hear a dollar? 90 cents once. Are you all done? 95 cents. Dollar. Thank you, Elmer. One dollar once. One dollar twice. Hey, Deacon. One dollar twice is two dollars, ain't it? What are you trying to do, run up the cost? I ain't got but a dollar and a quarter. One dollar. Third and last call. And sold to Elmer. There you are. Right over here, please. Elmer, if there isn't chicken in that basket, you're cheated. I'm cheated anyhow. Who are you? Ginny with the light brown freckles? Big tail. Oink, 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 oink. Why, isn't he cute? What's his family tree, Mr. Albright? Poison oak? Spreading chestnut for you, kid, and no blacksmith. I was only kidding, Elmer. You see, I'm not used to having lunch with a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> and now the next lady, please. Come here a minute. What am I offered? What am I offered, gentlemen? One dollar. Thank you, sir. I'm offered... Uh, One dollar and a half. Thank you, sir. I'm offered... Uh, a dollar and uh, six bits. Two dollars. Uh, thank you, sir. I'm offered... Uh, Three dollars. <laughs> Three Thank you. And a half. $5. Thank you, sir. I'm offered $5. Do I hear six? $5 once? $5 twice? Are you all done at $5? Do I hear uh, five and a half? $5 third and last call and sold to Mr. Dusty King. Dusty King, who just bought your lunch basket. How do you do, ma'am? It's a pleasure, ma'am. <laughs> and when they start talking about putting a church building right in the middle of town, it's time to show them that Apache Butte ain't going to be turned into no camp meeting ground. That's right, that's right. We all paid our poll taxes, didn't we? Sure. sure we did. Our money helped build the schoolhouse. Absolutely. Yeah. There ain't no hymn singers going to hold no social wire tonight. Well, what are we going to do about it? Are you men with me? Yes, sir. Come well, ahead. Wait well, the name of the song is uh, Wrangler's Roost, and uh, I thought maybe that might be kind of a nice name for the for the new church once it was built. Well, that's an excellent idea, Mr. King, and I'm sure that all the folks are anxious to hear your song. Well, thanks a lot, Deacon. <laughs> There's a rodeo in heaven just for cowboys. There's a wrangler's roost away up there on high. All our pals of long ago are up there now, boys, resting easy on the clover in the sky. It's a happy rodeo where good cowhands want to go. We'll be happy way up yonder by and by. There's a rodeo in heaven just for cowhands. It's a wrangler's roost away up there on high. No more blizzards, no more famines, no more 44's a-jammin'. Only happiness beyond that pearly gate. When he hollers, answer callin'. Start a run and go a hollin'. You don't have to worry now as to your fate. There's a rodeo in heaven 
just for cowboys We'll be happy way up yonder by and by All our pals of long ago are up there now, boys It's a wrangler's roost away up there on high All right, clear out of here, all of you! Just what do you mean, gentlemen? A bunch of us taxpayers has decided that you got no right in our schoolhouse. So get out! May I ask what authority you have to adjust? I have This will show those bullies that some folks can go to church and fight too. I think it's time to call a halt. Any use I'm making in the schoolhouse is with the full consent of the trustees. Consequently, I think we'd better say good night now. But first, I want to invite you and your friends back to the meeting a week from Sunday. This week, I'm leaving for Bitter Creek, where I'm also starting a movement to build a church. Good night, gentlemen. I never knew deacons made a habit of carrying guns. Well, sometimes when you get into a tussle with the devil, you have to bark louder than you bite. Unloaded? That's the only sure way to avoid accidents. You said a mouthful there, deacon. <laughs> well, it looks like our party has run away and left us. Yeah, it sure does. Are uh, you about ready for me to see you home, Miss Collins? Hey, wait a minute. I'm the one that brought Molly to the party. Oh, but you've been in somebody else. How about it, deacon? Doesn't taking your partner home go with the auction we had? Well, the rules aren't exactly clear on that. I suppose it's up to the young lady. Perhaps the best way to avoid argument is for you to see me home, Deacon. <laughs> Spoken with the wisdom of a Solomon. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night, Deacon. Good night, Molly. Good night. Well, you fixed it all right. What do you mean I fixed it? I think I could have done better myself. Deacon, while I put the coffee on. Thank you, Molly. But I still think you're putting yourself to a lot of trouble. Not at all. I'd make it for myself anyhow. I'll see if Father will join us. Father! That's strange. I didn't think Father'd go out. He wasn't feeling well. Perhaps he left a note. Of course. something wrong? Yes. I'm afraid there is. Three jacks. I made my flush. That beats me. Hey, Chuck, bring Joe another bourbon. No, don't want any more. I'm broke. I'm going home. I'm sleepy. Oh, now, wait a minute, Joe. I'm going to give you a chance to get even. We're going to raise the price of these blue chips to $100. Chad, I'm broke. Last check was all I had left in the bank. Oh, that's all right. I'm going to stake you to 5000 Now, here you are. There is five stacks, and they're each worth a thousand dollars. Now, if this game's a little steep for you fellas, you better lay out. I can stand it. How about you, Dell? Here you are, Joe. You can sign it right here. What does it say? 
before it just acknowledges that you got the 5,000 and why not puts up a little security? I already told you I won't sell you any of my lots. Well, who said anything about selling? You'll get this back just as soon as you cash in. Hold on a minute, you men. You know this man's no condition to play poker? Oh, don't worry. He's doing all right. Winning? No, not winning, but uh, he's able to play his cards. Come on, Mr. Collins, I'll take you home. Now listen, Corrigan. I said he was able to play his cards, and I'm not going to let you break up this game. It won't be necessary to break up the game, gentlemen. I'll play his hand. Mr. Corrigan, help him, will you? Molly's yes. waiting outside. Yes, sir. Three trays. Where do you get all these trays? Up your sleeve? Oh, no. There's something about me that has always seemed to attract them. Always? And you make it a practice of mixing poker with your church building? No, as a matter of fact, it's the first time I've played poker in... well, a good many years. I'd hate to embarrass you, but I have close to $20,000 in yes. chess. Are you sure the house can pay off? Oh, I'll pay off all right. If I don't, the house is yours. How much did you win from Mr. Collins? No, oh, I staked him to 5,000 Y. How much did he lose before that? Oh, I don't know, about 3,000. Well, that leaves me about 12,000 to the good. What do you say? One hand of draw, double or nothing. Well, uh, if I lose, it'll take me a day or two to pay up. Your first suggestion suits me. If you can't pay off, I'll take the house. What? And have that preacher you intend bringing in here uh, run it along with the church? No. I think Apache Butte can do very well without the El Dorado. All right with you? How many cards are you drawing? None. I'll play this flush. I'm drawing three cards to a pair of trays. I'll let you turn that one over. Oh, Deacon. Trays must almost be a superstition with you. Naturally. You know, it's funny. It never dawned on me. Black Bart coming to town just about the time Joe Collins did his talking. But what I'm worried about is Corrigan caught on too. So what? All Corrigan can do is turn him in for breaking his parole. They'll throw him back in prison. Then we got no more Bible bangers to worry about in Apache Butte. No, and we've got no more Black Bart to blame our collections on to. No, I'll tell you, Bull. When we're ready, we'll turn Mr. Deacon in ourselves. But first, we've got to take care of what happened to our bankroll. I'm beginning to think we're getting ourselves on pretty thin ice. Not if you keep a close watch and let nobody get the jump on us. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. You keep your eyes peeled on those strangers, 
Oh, no, Crash. You don't mean it. Oh, yes, I do. Draw poker, trays, unloaded gun, it all tallies. The deacon is Black Bart. Now all we gotta do is prove it. Yeah, but a deacon robbing stagecoaches. <laughs> don't make sense. Oh, yes, it does. If you're looking for a way to cover suspicion. Yeah, like this weekend. He starts out for Bitter Creek. Yeah. He takes a couple of minutes off and robs a stage. Right. And then he goes ahead and has his Sunday meeting. Now, that's just about the way I got it figured, too. Now, one of us will go ahead and ride on the stage. And the other two... The deacon's been riding awful fast. We ought to be ahead of him. Guys, I don't even see a sign of it. Well, there's only one way we could have missed him, if he took the higher trail. But that'll lead him away from the stage road. Of course, it could be that he didn't pick the day to hold up hey, the... Alibi! There he is now! He's timing himself right to head off the stagecoach. Come on, we gotta keep moving. Stay where you are. Start reaching. Turn around keep your hands up amongst the clouds. I'll lead them horses and do a little marching along the slope and over the ridge. Talk things over inside the shack. What's there to talk over? What's the notion of all this monkey business anyhow? Not much, I reckon, until Black Bart gets here. Then we'll decide amongst ourselves what to do with you. All right, get inside. Horses, driver. I was sent here to find Black Bart. How did you know? I figured it out a couple of days ago. Don't waste your time on me. I'm all right. Just a little faint. The robber, he went that way, towards the rocks. A robber? But 
What robber are you talking about? I don't know. He was masked. I... I tried to stop him, but... But my gun wasn't loaded. Was he bareheaded? Yes. Go after him. Don't worry about me. And I will just as soon as I take a look at that wound. You haven't time. I can take care of it. You give me the handkerchief out of my coat pocket. It's it's only the shoulder. Uh, I'll use your horse and I'll be back just as soon as I can get here. I'll be all right. are you throwing? I picked up these two trailing you. Fetched them on here. Where's Corrigan? That's what I've been trying to find out. These two birds ain't very talkative. No? <laughs> well, I guess we can loosen up their tongues fast enough. <laughs> Speaking of the devil. Hi, Bull. You look after those two. I'll take care of Mr. Corrigan. That is, just as soon as I'm sure he's close enough. You all right, Dusty? Yeah. Oh, how about you, Alibi? Oh, I'm all right. Be sure a close call. You see, Molly, the range busters also know that I'm Black Bart. At least Corrigan does. And now I can see all my plans for the new church fading. They wouldn't take you back to... to prison. Well, they couldn't. They sent word to your father. They're coming over here this afternoon. Come in. Molly, we just stopped over to say goodbye. I want to thank you, boys, for all you've done for the folks here in Apache Butte. As for myself, well, I'm prepared to go with you. I'll get my bag. Why, Deacon, I don't know what you're talking about. We came here to get a stage robber, and our job's completed. And now we're moseying. As far as we're concerned, the real Black Bart is dead. It's a pleasure to know men like you. Men who can temper justice with understanding. <laughs> 